You know that feeling you're in a loud, crowded room, but somehow you can block out all that noise and just focus on the person you're talking to? It feels like a superpower, right? Well, in a way, it is. And that superpower actually has a name. So let's get into the incredible science behind it. I mean, seriously, think about it for a second. You've got glasses clinking, music playing, maybe 20 other conversations happening all around you, and yet your brain can just lock on to a single voice. How on earth does it pull off that incredible sorting trick? Well, it turns out this whole scenario isn't just something that happens at parties. It's a really famous scientific puzzle, and it's got the perfect name, the cocktail party problem. For decades, scientists and engineers have been completely fascinated by this, trying to get computers and robots to do what our brains do so easily. And the solution to that problem? That's what we call the cocktail party effect. It's basically your brain's own built-in, top-of-the-line noise-canceling software. It lets you pick and choose what you listen to. It's a little piece of neurological magic that, honestly, most of us take for granted every single day. Okay, so how does this magic actually work? Well, it's not a trick at all. It's a ridiculously sophisticated biological system. Think of it as your brain's very own advanced sound filter. The big secret here is what we call 3D hearing. And it all comes down to a simple fact. You have two ears. It's a three-step process that happens faster than you can blink. First, your ears capture the sound. But here's the key. One ear gets the sound just milliseconds before the other. That tiny delay is everything. Next, your brain compares those two signals. It instantly crunches the numbers to figure out exactly where each sound is coming from. It's like a built-in GPS for sound. And finally, the magic happens. You focus. Your brain turns up the volume on the voice you want to hear and actively pushes everything else into the background. And the wildest part of all of this? You don't have to think about any of it. Your brain just does it. It's completely automatic, happening in an instant, and it's what keeps our world from being a chaotic mess of noise. But what happens when that amazing automatic system breaks down? What if half of that crucial information, half of the input, suddenly goes missing? The entire experience changes, drastically. Because if you only have hearing in one ear, what's known as single-sided deafness, that whole elegant system we just talked about, it just collapses. Without two points of data, your brain can't build its sound map. It loses its ability to filter. Just look at the difference here. With two ears, you get a rich 3D soundscape. Filtering is effortless. But with one ear, that soundscape just flattens out. It's like going from a 3D movie to a single blurry photograph. Every sound is on the same level, all blended together. So the brain has to switch jobs, from being this expert conductor to being a stressed out detective, trying to find clues in all the chaos. For someone going through this, the world doesn't just sound different. It feels completely different. It can be incredibly overwhelming, almost like you're caught in a current you just can't escape. This quote from our source material just captures that feeling so perfectly. I mean, imagine that. Words aren't clear signals anymore. They're just things rushing past you in this powerful, nonstop river of noise, and you have to physically try to snatch them out of the air. And this, this gets right to the core of it. It's such a paradox. The problem isn't that you can't hear. The problem is that you hear everything, all at once, with no filter. Your brain is just flooded. It's like trying to read a book where every single word from every single page is printed right on top of each other. You see it all, but you understand almost nothing. So imagine being in a classroom or a busy staff meeting. It's a constant, silent battle. You're putting in so much effort to follow along, reading lips, watching body language, constantly trying to guess the words you missed. It's an invisible struggle that is just completely draining. And that total exhaustion, it actually has a name, listening fatigue. It's the real measurable mental burnout that happens when your brain has to work overtime all day long just to do something that used to be automatic. It's not just feeling tired, it's a deep cognitive exhaustion. But this is not an impossible situation, not at all. It's a challenge that calls for new strategies, for adaptation, and for recognizing the absolute strength it takes to get by in a world that's really built for two ears. I mean, our brains are amazing. They adapt. People learn to rely more on visual cues, on context, to fill in the auditory blanks. But while that helps a ton, it's still a workaround. It's not a true fix for the underlying problem of filtering sound. So, this is where practical, everyday strategies become so important. It's all about taking conscious control of your environment. 
Simple things, right? Like positioning yourself so your hearing ear is facing the person you're talking to. Or picking a restaurant that has carpets and curtains that soak up all that extra noise. It's about letting your friends know which side to walk on and knowing when to step outside for a minute just to give your brain a break. And really, this might be the most important takeaway of all. For anyone navigating the world this way, it's about reframing the experience. It's not a failure when you miss something. It's a massive victory every time you connect. Every single conversation you successfully have is a testament to your focus and your resilience. And all of this leaves us with one last thought. Understanding the cocktail party effect and what it means when it's gone isn't just cool brain science, it's about empathy. It makes you wonder, how can we design our world, our offices, our restaurants, our schools, to be just a little bit easier for everyone to hear in? How can we make our world a little more accessible?